Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we are exposing the secrets of the CIA. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking The Last Gentleman. From Strangeland <laughs> Brewing Company. <laughs> You're drinking The Last Gentleman. <laughs> From Strangeland Brewing Company in Austin, Texas. That didn't hit me. Like, I read it and I was like, that's such a cool name. It I even commented like, that it would have been good for the incels episode. But you said that and it just hit me how yeah, wrong that it could does, sound. It does sound very, very wrong. Very, very wrong. That's okay, though. Uh, if you're drinking it, it's a strange gentleman anyway. Oh, so. Oh, it, oh, look at that. That looks so good. So yeah. it's a bourbon porter, and it's by the Strangeland Brewing Company in Austin, Texas, which is actually a, lot of head. a company that we have never had before. I like that. So look at I'm that. Kinda, that bottle. Oh, it's it only, is gorgeous. It's only 6.8. I would expect That's it to be higher. That's crazy. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good I'm to fine me. with that, actually. Actually, you know what that makes me worry? Being that it's um, a bourbon barrel aged... It makes me wonder if it's not going to be have a really light mouthfeel. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Which uh, a porter should not. It looks good. It looks really good. I can smell it from here. So it's got a good good smell to it anyway. All right. So Chill, we, dude. What exactly are we talking about today, John? We're talking about the CIA. Uh, in general? Yeah. I, well, in general, th- there's going to be one particular event, the uh, church committee, that we're going to kind of use as a, a, a case study. Oof. Damn it. Oh, everybody finish. I'm not finishing. Hell no. It's too early. As a, as a case study on the CIA, but we are Let's going to be going into later. some other things. Uh, so I, I guess to start, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the CIA in general. Um, so the CIA was... What does that stand for again? Central Intelligence Agency. Oh, okay. Did you really not know? No, I knew. Okay. Uh, Just in case we have like young listeners who haven't been inducted into that information yet. Oh, okay. You know. uh, so the CIA was founded on September 18th uh, in 1947. Harry Truman. Yep. And its primary mission is, as stated on their own website, to collect, analyze, evaluate, and disseminate foreign intelligence to assist the president and senior U.S. government policymakers in making decisions relating to national security. Yeah, it was a uh, uh, the CIA was an outgrowth of the old uh, OSS. Uh, OSS was uh, was the intelligence organization in World War II. What did that stand for? Uh, that one I actually don't know. Uh, yeah, man, would you just ask me something and I I have forgotten. Why, why uh, do I ask you? I, I have Google. I had it just a second ago when it's gone. Um, anyway. The OSS Office was of Strategic, strategic services. services. Yeah, the uh, I kept wanting to say op- uh, opportunity, and I knew that wasn't right. <laughs> uh, but the OSS was a, was a way in World War II of gathering all the intelligence agencies together. Because before that, the Navy had their own intelligence, the Army had their own intelligence, and they didn't talk to each other. Yeah, because uh, they hate each other. Yeah, yeah. Well, at the end of World War II, they uh, the the military wanted to get rid of the OSS because they felt like it was in competition with them. So they got rid of it for a while, and Harry Truman quickly realized that he needed that again, so he reformed it as the Central Intelligence Agency. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's just some background for yeah, you. No, I thought, yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, I didn't know that, so uh, that's, that's awesome. Uh, so basic uh, background on, on what the CIA is. So let me ask, when you, when you hear... That their mission is to collect, analyze, evaluate, and disseminate foreign foreign intelligence to assist various yeah, things. Yeah. What do you think of them actually doing? Like, what does that come to mind? Yeah, uh, I, I'm kind of in a weird place because I I, I, I know a little bit about it, but uh, uh, hearing that, I you know, you would assume that 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 they were following their mission statement and only collecting foreign data, which is the, their mission statement. Uh, that, there, there was a big pissing uh, contest between them and the FBI, that the FBI was in was. charge of... of, of Ma- actually, at first, it was it was this hemisphere. It was the Americas, and mm-hmm. then they, they, they backed it down to just the United States. But the CIA was in charge of everything outside. 
Uh, they hadn't always agreed on that, but that's the mission statement. Yeah. Well, and, and beyond that, something that strikes me about this is their mission statement only talks about data collection. It didn't talk about actually <laughs> acting on that data right. in any kind of way. Just, yeah, it sounds gonna, like they aggregate the data and then they give it to the people that need it to take action on it. That that was what the mission was. Yes. Yeah. 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 So uh, I guess the next question is, did they follow the mission? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we actually uh, didn't have a lot of information on what was going on in the CIA until uh, up in the, the 1970s uh, when the uh, uh, church committee came out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there. I'm going to go back and give a little bit of history leading up to this because yeah. I think setting the tone is really important for this. Yep. So it's December of 1974. Casey Nick and the Sunshine Band are on the radio. Yes, that's that's. Nixon is in the presidency, briefly. Briefly, uh, it would, and and where I was going was Nixon had just left office in August. So Ford is in the presidency now. Yeah, Ford is in the presidency, and he leaves because of the Watergate investigation yep. of the theft that occurred in 1972. So two years prior to that, the break-in of the Democratic National Committee headquarters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, this gentleman called Seymour Hersh publishes a groundbreaking article in the New York Times, and it's titled, this is a, a great title, it's not, that was ironic, uh, Huge CIA Operation Reported in U.S. Against Anti-War Forces, Other Descendants in Nixon Years. He's not a journalist, is he? Well, apparently he was. He's probably a Pulitzer Prize winning yeah, journalist. Usually, your journalists don't write the, the, the titles or headlines, so, Yeah. In fact, they frequently get pissed off at the headlines that, that are assigned to them. I was yeah. just joking. So, so this article comes out, and this leads to uh, two committees being formed in 1975, the most prominent being the Church Committee in the Senate, uh, led by Senator Frank Church. But there was another one called the Pike Committee in the House of Representatives, led by uh, Representative Otis Pike. Yep. So these two committees uh, start digging into, and there's a lot of focus on the CIA, but they're also hitting the IRS. They're also hitting the NSA. Any three-letter acronym government agency, it's probably <laughs> yeah. in this. Um, it was an investigation <laughs> into government overreach. Yeah, yeah, and, and basically uh, kind of where they're coming at this in is we formed all of these executive administrations, but who's actually watching them? And what it came to quickly was nobody. nobody. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they go through this lengthy process of bringing people in and and questioning them. And I'm going to go through. I want to go through some of these findings one by one and discuss them as we go. So the first one is there is a program in which they are going through and opening people's mail and taking pictures of their letters. They're unsealing the envelopes. Uh, opening the mail and resealing the envelopes. And um, this has been going on. They have something like 250,000 images of letters that they have collected over yep. this time period. Uh, yeah, and, and domestically collected. Dem yes, that, yeah, that, that's yeah. important too. So, you know, one thing that struck me when I first heard this is we've recently had a, a data collection issue come up in, in, in our recent history here. And one of the big arguments I kept hearing from defenders of, of the mass data collection programs is the Constitution only guards you for papers, things yeah. that are contained. You have the right to be secure in your person and papers, yeah. Yes. But, and effects. Yeah. You know, I, I hadn't actually heard about this before I started researching it. It's interesting to me that that was such a big argument because they didn't seem to give a fuck about it when it was papers. That's true. Uh, so, 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 you know, why, why, why do you care now? Yeah. Right. It's a good point. So, uh, any other thoughts on that before I go on? No. Uh, I, I was just going to say, like, like they've ever given a fuck. Yeah. I mean, I kind of went on this tirade before, but they're going to, if they want to look at your papers, your person, whatever, they're going to look at them and they they literally give zero shits what the Constitution yeah, they, says. Yeah, they've written so many loopholes into like, that. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Uh, like it, it is interesting that they used the argument later that these weren't papers when they have this they, they, uh, have, they have this president yeah. <laughs> yeah but um you know they they have this president of nah guys we totally did it and it was fine yeah um so it is that is interesting but i i have no expectation that they're actually going to 
observe any of that or give a half a shit. This maybe thing? half a shit. No. Yeah. Like an eighth of a shit, maybe. They'll file it away with the, with, with the copies of the pictures. Right. <laughs> uh, this next one was interesting to me. This this one had actually been going on longer than the CIA existed um, before it was formed um, as general administrative spying um, and was part of the, the formation, but they were copying telegrams. And that one's interesting to me because it kind of falls in a halfway between is this a paper thing or while it's electronically traveling... Is it not? And it, it kind of... You know, it, goes, it, it doesn't go through the air, so they don't have the right that they own the air. But does does the U.S. government own the wires that it goes down? I, I, you know, that's... Yeah, <laughs> I, I yeah if they subsidize the installation of those wires, do they have some claim to them? Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, you know, that's the justification now that they can intercept your cell phone calls yeah. because they go through the air and the air is ours. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and on that same note, uh, this actually isn't even written in my notes, but I did see it briefly. Uh, at the time, they were working with phone companies to collect phone conversations at yeah. the time. And this actually is going to lead into my next one, because what they were doing with those phone conversations, they weren't doing the mass data collection they're doing now. But they were monitoring political dissenters, including, I'm going to give you a few names, uh, Martin Luther King. Yep. Uh, Muhammad Ali. Uh-huh. Frank Church, the guy leading the investigation. <laughs> and, and, and Walter Mondale, who was on the committee. Yeah. And future vice president. Yeah. For real, though, that makes sense. Because you want to make sure that the guy that's leading this investigation is not compromised. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, can you imagine how embarrassing that would be? For real. Oh, I just love it. Uh, <laughs> we're investigating the guy. That's hey, guys, who wants to lead the investigation? Like, you need to know we're going to also monitor your <laughs> shit. But. I think that's fair. I think it's fair. I, I kind of think it is, actually. As long as they tell you they're monitoring you. I'm trying to find this quote. By the way, guys, oh, they're not monitoring you. They don't give a shit about you. I'm trying to find this this quote really quickly because it actually was uh, was really interesting to me let me refresh this real so quick what do you, while you're doing that what do you think about this idea do you think that let's just look at the pure constitutional issue is it is it constitutionally okay to form an organization whose job it is to spy on foreign people i mean I, if you just look at the mission statement i don't think the mission statement violates is the it constitution. constitutionally okay yeah yeah I have a weak argument for why it's not, but I think most people's reading, of, I think most people's understanding of it would be that it would. My argument is that the Constitution never says these rights are granted to American citizens. It, in fact, says all men. Yeah, yeah. So that would be my argument, but I don't think that's how most people read it. Yeah. It doesn't say that, that the rights are guaranteed by all men. It says that, that all men are endowed by their creator. With certain... Yeah. Inalienable they, rights they, yeah, that were yeah. then listed. Yeah, but then they didn't. They don't doesn't necessarily say that we're going to protect those unalienable rights but, for uh, all men. So, uh, so I, let me I, ask, I, I see the logic behind it. But I, I think there's a difference. I think there's a difference in saying I'm not going to protect your rights and I'm going to violate your rights. It's like saying yeah. I don't have to stop someone from shooting you, but that doesn't give me the right to shoot you myself. Yeah. I, okay. Maybe. Maybe. But that that would be my argument. But I then don't you think, got the 14th Amendment that applies everything to citizens. So you know. Yeah. yeah. But but anyway, I don't think most people read it that way. Yeah, yeah. And corporations. So I found I found the quote. Those are pe those, those, those are individuals. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, individuals. Uh, if they're incorporated in the U.S. only. <laughs> of course. But uh, because so, then they're not citizens. Which is Delaware, by the way. Yeah. It's where everybody's incorporated. Yeah. Is Delaware. The crossing of Delaware. No. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Senator, uh, in, in, in response to all these investigations, uh, Senator Wa Walter uh, Mondale publicly asked if the NSA could be used by a President A, this is his words, in the future to spy upon the American people to chill and interrupt political dissent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that is future Vice President Walter Mondale that used the NSA just for that purpose, by the way. He was curious. Yeah, he was curious. Yeah. He needed to know if it was okay. Is, he is wasn't it, saying there's a problem. He just said, like, you know, in the future, I'd like to know if it's okay yeah. if I do this. But I thought it was interesting because these are the very arguments echoed right now by Snowden yeah. and, and, yeah, and, yeah. and all these whistleblowers that are coming out is, yeah, if they want to stop you, they will. And they're, you can't do anything about it. Yeah. At yeah. least as far as we're being told. Looks like it. Looks like it. Uh, and if you look at the current uh, uh, iPhone hacks and all that stuff, apparently you can't stop the Chinese either. So, yeah. No, so, you cannot. <laughs> this next one... That should be a shirt. You can't stop the Chinese. 
I'm not doing that. <laughs> These next two are actually quite chilling with me when taken in combination with the monitoring programs. But you can't ch- you can't stop the Chinese or anybody else for that matter. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. So they developed covert me- covert methods of killing people, including a oh, this dark was super gun. Cool. A dark gun. Yep. With and it had various darts you could use with it, but one of the darts that they say. You would never know you got hit. You might th- think you got bit by a mosquito. It would kill you rather quickly. The dart would disintegrate, leaving no evidence and nothing that would show up on a toxicology report. They would think you had a heart attack. Yeah, that uh, that came out of the OSS first. They had a, uh, uh, it wasn't a gun, but they had a, a OSS had developed a, a umbrella mm-hmm. that they could mm-hmm. t- tap you in the back of the leg and inject and uh they, of course, that was never used, they said. No, well, Didn't they say none of these were ever used? Well, I'm pretty sure the umbrella got used once. Now, it may oh, not it? have been used by our government, but I, I read a, a case study where a guy was assassinated, and they later, uh, people had had stories first. Okay, let me, let me re- reorganize my thoughts. For some reason, they, they were extra thorough in the, um, in the autopsy. Uh, autopsy, and they found little beads. That would house poison. They didn't know what was in them, but they found little beads. And somebody said, yeah, this guy bumped into him with an umbrella. Uh. So was it the U.S. government that did it? Was it a foreign government? We don't know who did it, but an umbrella was used. Was it a mad scientist? All all I know is that if you develop a technology, the technology gets used. Yeah. I mean, they're not throwing money away. Well, I mean, they are. Yeah. Well. No, I guess those, those $3 million toilets did get used. Yeah, they got used to assassinate people. <laughs> um, Senator Walt... Uh, no, I'm, I'm skipping one. Uh, the other one that, that came out was plan, actual plans to assassinate foreign leaders. Yeah. Uh, I read a long list of them. I think most of our listeners aren't going to recognize them, but one of them that I think they will is Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro, yes. Fidel Castro was on that list. Yeah, they, they, they made... Uh, we know of three attempts on, on Castro. Yeah. Yeah. One of them was the ridiculous exploding cigar one. Uh, what? Wait, hold on. You, now, now you gotta, I didn't know that was this. legit. I thought that was a joke. No, that really happened. Uh, oh. the, 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 I don't know if it ever, they ever actually put it into effect, but the CIA had a plan to uh, to to get a, an exploding cigar to Fidel Castro. Mm. Yeah, that was a real plan that's, that's been released in the all the papers that came out with the Kennedy assassination stuff. That was one of the things that came out. These fucking ideas. Well, I think and, it's a genius idea, personally. And I, this one I haven't researched. I would fall for that. I'm just saying. You could give me a cigar, have it blow up my face, I wouldn't know the difference. Don't do that, please. <laughs> this one I haven't researched. But I was told by and and I was told by a friend and the story seems reasonable because he even says they never did this. But it was one of the plans that came out. Was they were gonna get a bunch of college students during spring break and give them really cheap airline tickets to uh, destination vacation and then get the plane and have it take off and have it turn around and come back and it wasn't clear to me from what he was saying if the students were just going to disappear or they were going to go back to their families and we don't know who was on that plane but have another plane that could be fl- flown by remote drone go and blow up over Cuba to say the Cubans blew it up as, as, as a way to, to get us involved in the war. Wow, false flag, huh? Yeah. yeah. I I think the uh, I think I think the the proof would have to be there for me to believe that I don't it, it sounds too too black helicopterish for me. Ding that, ding that ding! Check out our old episode yeah. on false flags. That yeah. having been said, I wouldn't say that that, that that it couldn't have happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, but 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 he now it's someone you know. Oh, yeah, that tells oh, me a lot. God. Yeah. But uh, but but uh, uh, his whole thing was that at that time they could already make drone planes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe. But I don't but. Know. Telling me he's a black helicopter guy anyway. He 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 Kid is. Foil hat. He is. But when he tells me something like this, and he says, "Here are the papers on it. I didn't go through and read them. They never did this." That to me sounds a lot more, a lot less conspiracy theories. I well, think the conspiracy theorists would be like, "No, they did this," and you know. Well, yeah. the thing is, the, the we we know things that they did do. We mm-hmm. know the CIA tried to uh, tr- tried to form a revolution in, in Cuba. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know Bay of Pigs was a CIA operation. We mm-hmm. know that they tried these things. Yeah. So, well, and and we also have the people concocting plans. There were pretty imaginative. Mm-hmm. Like we have access to 
a lot of things that they thought about doing. They thought about trying, thought about making, um, that to the best of our knowledge, never actually went into effect. Yeah. So, well, you know, the, the even your, you know, you the best, the best fiction has a, has a, has a degree of truth in it. Just go watch a James Bond movie with all the shit Q events. You, <laughs> you know, know th- yeah. that was interesting to me reading this and knowing the time setting that James Bond was supposed to be set in yeah. and the time that it came out. And then kind of correlating back to this of, yeah. okay, this is what they were talking about in James Bond. Sure, Warren. sure. There's lots of shit like that. You know, but we have a long history of that stuff. You know, uh, at, at, as early as, as, what, 1904? I don't know if that's right. Early 1900s when, when uh, uh, Theodore Roosevelt was, was president. We actually fomented, fomented a revolution in Panama where we had uh, – we, we got the volunteer fire department in Panama City to sew a flag – raise the flag, declare themselves independence, and we recognize the fire department as the legitimate government, and Panama became free. We've done this shit before, so, you know, uh, and it, it, it's hard for me not to believe that, that, we didn't, that we didn't at least consider it. Well, and, and you know, they, they say a lot of this wasn't used, but interesting piece. Th- this one's true. Um, after all this came out and Martin Luther King was named, Martin Luther King's family later won a civil lawsuit against the government for assassination attempts on MLK by the government. Now, this was a civil lawsuit. It's got a lower standard of proof and all that. Right. But they were able to win the fucking lawsuit. Yeah. Yeah. Much, much lower standard of proof. But yeah. yeah. Uh, there, was, there was a great deal of evidence of, of, of things that, they, that the, the, more the FBI than the CIA uh, but was doing to MLK. You know, there's, we have... We have proof now that the uh, that the FBI was sending MLK messages saying saying uh, that we know about an affair you had. You better kill yourself, or we're going to release it. You know that's that's a fact that yeah. happened. So uh, you know that was the FBI. I mean that was yeah. that was our chief law enforcement agency. And crazy that it was like kill yourself, not quit with the civil rights stuff. No, no, kill yourself. Let's kill yourself. Well, and and beyond that, we also know now. That the whole uh, uh, strict crackdown on marijuana was part of Nixon's own plan. And again, back in the same time period, to demonize the blacks and the hippies yeah. as political descendants. Yeah, that was, that was, that was probably, uh, that was probably centers, put up yeah. by Herbert Hoover. Uh, Hoover was, was pretty, pretty big about that kind of stuff, yeah. Uh, you, know, you know, it's not, not, much, diff- it's not much different than uh, the Planned Parenthood ideas of, uh, you know, let's just wipe out the, yeah. you know. Let's let's give birth control to a certain group of people so they're not, you know, they're not reproducing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we had this huge investigation. So, what did the investigation conclude, and what was their action? Uh, so, and this is off the uh, uh, Senate.org, uh, Senate.gov. Sorry. Uh, investigators determined that beginning with President Franklin Roosevelt's administration and continuing through the early 1970s, because apparently it stopped. Intelligence. Yeah. Well, that's when the investigation stopped. <laughs> yeah. They got tired of it. They it, kept finding shit. <laughs> intelligence excesses at home and abroad were not the product of any single party, administration, or man, but had developed as America rose to become a superpower during the global uh, Cold War. So let me translate that so, for you. It wasn't any one person's fault. It was everybody that was doing it. It was everybody pervasive was throughout the entire yeah. organization. Well, the entire government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nobody yeah. who was parties. employed at the time was responsible. It was the old <laughs> parties, right? Uh, and and in response, they established the FISA courts, who have been great yeah, yeah. overseers oh, of our. Yeah. Sure, I'm glad we got those. Sure, yeah. I'm glad we got those because another court is what we needed. A secret court. A secret court. Yes. Yeah. A secret court. It, uh, Wait, without any defense for the citizens, no, the citizens. Oh don't no, no, get a no! They have a citizen representative. I mean, they don't have any power, but they they're there well, to it, represent the citizens. Yeah, but you don't get to pick who it is. No, you don't yep, get to yeah. pick who it is. <laughs> it's not like you get a lawyer. They go, hey, this guy that I'm friends with who agrees with me on everything, you be the citizens. It's a lot like and the old be like, Cool, I'm gonna hang out here and and drink scotch and smoke cigars well, and let, jack let, off. It'll be fine. Let, let me let me let me restate that. They do get somebody arguing the case that gets to be appointed by the people who have an interest in. Yeah, the, it's not like we in the elect of the case. Yeah. Our, our, yeah, our own yeah. representation. The, yeah, I wasn't trying to genuinely yeah. defend that, yeah. by the way. I was really just kind of. The person who wants at, the information, aka the gets executive to appoint branch, the person that gets to say, <laughs> Yeah, you. I'm sure that there is some lawyer 
who was found to be the dumbest lawyer in the administration, <laughs> and he got a really nice job for it. Uh, somebody, somebody go scrape, scrape Bob up off the barroom floor. He's going to yeah. take care of this. The person one. that 200 years ago would have been, you know, the, the what are they called? The town idiot? Village idiot. That's Village the word. Idiot. Yeah. For, for all the complaints about court-appointed lawyers, this is worse. This is worse. Yeah. This, this is a like, prosecution appointed yeah, lawyer. Yeah, this is a prosecution appointed <laughs> lawyer right here. That's what we have. A prosecution appointed lawyer. Did you get into uh, uh, what when, once Gerald Ford came into office, how Gerald Ford responded to the committee? I, I found that interesting. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so so uh, there were certain things he wanted redacted from the report. Yeah, like the report. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, largely. Isn't that how it goes? Yeah. The, the thing that I found that he was, he was largely against uh, publishing was he did not want? Um, oh yeah, th- this thing's really heady, like um, amazingly heady. Um, he did not want the reports of the assassination attempts against foreign governments to come out. Well, rightfully so. You know, you know the, the, the one good thing that came out of this is uh, uh, Reagan, I believe, was the president that first signed it. I'm not sure that that's right, uh, but, but made it illegal for for, for the. Uh, <laughs> wasn't it Reagan that, that signed that first? No. Gerald Ford immediately made an executive order. It was Ford. Yeah, it was executive order, yeah. Saying that we would not do this anymore. Reagan came back and put one on top of that that supposedly strengthened yeah. What Gerald Ford originally did. Yeah, and it's been renewed by every president. And 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 Reagan renewed and ignored. You want to well, know we why know. Reagan strengthened it? There were loopholes. Yeah. They yeah. found they they were told not to kill foreign leaders and and I, if I remember correctly, the loophole had something to do with, like, we're not allowed to kill them, but if these rebels down here want to kill them, what can we do about well, it? Well, here's the deal. is 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 Does it prevent... It, it just prevents assassination. It doesn't prevent killing of them. Like the uh, <coughs> the military strikes that we did on Qaddafi's house. Uh, that was a military strike. That wasn't an assassination attempt. No, well, my understanding of, of what the problem was, and again, I'm, I, I'm kind of... I'm not great on this point. But um, my understanding was that they were hiring out the assassinations, and so the government wasn't doing it. They were getting someone else to do their dirty yeah, work, and they do, said— Do we have evidence of assassination attempts since then? I don't. Yeah. See, I, I've heard rumors, but I, when I looked, I, 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 didn't, I didn't find any evidence. And I can't think of cases where, you know— we know that, that, that Kennedy tried to assassinate Godin Diem. We know that Johnson tried to get uh, uh, Castro— uh, but we don't. I don't know. I can't think of somebody that was uh, uh, that, that that was targeted like that. Well, well, here's my question. Somebody came to. I, I guarantee you, Reagan did not read through all this shit. Somebody came to Reagan and said something. Whether it was somebody who was like, "This could be a problem later," or somebody who offered to do something for him or whatever, and Reagan felt the need. He suddenly realized there were loopholes and felt the need to strengthen it. Why did that happen? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Was I, it just he was reading through? It's like, oh, there's this hypothetical. I don't think that happened. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I've done that with like our state party stuff before, but I'm also a, l- a lot less busy than the president. And there's a <laughs> lot less to go through. I, there is a lot less to go but, through. But again, again, I, I'm 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 going through the people that I'm, I'm trying to run through this in my head, and I can't think of a case that's. That's that's in this time period. Mm-hmm. Now this is I've I've looked at it a little bit, but I'm I'm as a historian thinking of it. I can't think of a case that that meets this criteria. Uh, you know where where somebody was mysteriously assassinated that was linked to the U.S. I, I just I'm not drawing it mm-hmm. in this time period. Okay, and I I I think that that if you're going to say that, you know, well it must be because he strengthened it. Well, okay, but but what what was it? But but okay, let me counter that. Because would we have ever known about Fidel Castro's assassination plans had that that investigation ever come up? And would you sit, be sitting there arguing, yeah, I mean, there were rumors, but well, was but, it killed? But they you failed. Know? There were there were attempts. They were. That, there were they attempts were. that failed. I can't think of an attempt. I'm just I'm 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 trying to 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 you know. Uh, I'm going through the world leaders that that were in this period. Well, then you have to ask. You know, there are world leaders that have made claims since then. Kim Jong Un. Yeah. Yeah. But do we believe him? And, and that, and then there, there's that whole, you know. I, I think if we wanted Kim Jong Un dead, he'd be dead. I, 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 I don't know. But I, if you, you would probably say the same about Fidel, unless these reports have come out. That's probably true. That's probably true. So I, I, 
I, I Kim Jong Un doesn't poop, so it'd be hard to kill him. And, and he, he you makes, just feed him. Makes holes in one. He doesn't shit, so we're just going to feed him till he explodes. I love it. Uh, I, I I always come back to this with conspiracy theories. I think the burden of proof is on the conspiracy theorist. Well, yeah. And I don't see I don't see the evidence of this. I I think there's a possibility, but I I, I don't see the evidence. I tend to agree with you. I, I genuinely do. But it is really hard with these kinds of issues when everything is admittedly cloak and dagger. Yeah. For me to sit there and just and 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 say and ignore this stuff. Does that make sense? Well, I think about you know uh, the the story in the, in the Marine Corps when I was in was that that people had Saddam Hussein in their sights and were ordered not to shoot him because it was a violation of international law to do so. Right. Now it wasn't a violation. Then we were told over. It wasn't a violation. If he dies in a bombing run on a, on a on a target, it wasn't a violation on that. On but, a different target. Well, it could even it, it could even be him if he's in if, if if the target is you're in this palace or you're in a military area you're you know and, and you're targeting, but for a person to take a take and draw a bead on him and shoot him, he was the leader of a nation that was a violation of the of, 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 yeah. of the law, so it wasn't done. The fact that that was what was going on in the '90s makes me wonder if you, you know wonder about this whole concept. <laughs> I agree with that, and I'm. I'm and then I look at it and I go, go. If, if if we were doing it, I think there's a lot of other people that would be dead. If, you know, if 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 it was something that was being done on a large scale. Well, then you also have to ask about motivations. I mean, you talk about Saddam, but Saddam was our guy for a while. He was, but he was not our guy for a long time, uh, for for a long period in there before before the war broke out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and you know we did kill him. We found a way to kill him. Yeah. We found a way to kill him that didn't do that. Yeah. Which makes me, you know, uh, makes me wonder even more about it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you know, uh, what? Why could why could we kill Bin Laden, but we couldn't kill couldn't do that to Saddam Hussein? Why could we? Because he wasn't kill a Squadron? foreign leader. Because he wasn't a foreign leader. His, 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 it wasn't a government that we were recognizing. Yeah. If he had had been the legitimate leader of a government, that kill squad couldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. It would have been a violation of the law. So. You know, I I wonder about these things because because the evidence that I see out there is evidence that we have gone out of our way not to do that in recent mm-hmm. years. Yeah, mm-hmm. fair enough. Yeah, do we want to talk about the beer real quick, and then I want to talk about the CIA today and some of the stuff yeah, yeah. that kind of ties yeah. in. I uh, I want to go last on this one. I, I'll go oh, first really? on this one. Okay. Uh, cool. I don't like it. Uh, I, I I want to. <laughs> I, I I really I wanted to like it, uh, but. It's got a good look to it. It's got a good smell, mm-hmm. but the, the the flavor is. It has a light mouthfeel, doesn't it? It has a very light mouthfeel, yeah. and it is it is just uh, ridiculously sweet to me. And I don't like a real sweet beer. There's a, there's there's a, a tanginess to it that I don't like. Um, I can smell the bourbon, but I can't taste the bourbon much in it. It's not it's not there. There's 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 really no bell curve. It when you when you drink it, it shocks you, and then it's gone. I. I it, I, I am I am not a fan of this beer. I, I I really wish I could have been because it's got a great great bottle, a great smell, a great look. Everything about this I like. You have a new I company like. that comes in and you want to like you want them to do well, I was, right? Just looking at this bottle and reading about it, I was more excited about this one than I have been about one in a long time. Yeah. And I I just I don't think it's a good beer. I think it's it's got it's got very little going for it. Well, there's something interesting about this is that. Porters tend to be high ABV beers. Bourbon barrel aged beers tend to be high ABV yeah, beers. And, 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 and it's a low ABV. It's both of those, and it's a 6.8. Yeah. And, and thin. And, and yeah. very thin. Very thin. Uh, I, I'm going to go. I'm going to go pretty low on this one. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go one six. I just don't like wow. this beer at all. I don't think it deserves quite that low. I really don't like this beer. <laughs> okay. All right. I've actually found it. Um, it is not an excellent beer and I think it does not do well with what it's labeled as by any means. Um, but I have found it enjoyable to drink, just not enjoyable for what it is. Um, I've actually nearly finished and then re refilled. Although obviously I'm, I'm only, well, for those of you who are only listening and not on the YouTube, I'm only putting like six ounces at a time. Um, so I, Finished six ounces and then refilled from there. But um, I've enjoyed drinking it for the most part. It's got a little bit of a a bitter offness 
at the back end. Um, I'm I'm also not tasting the bourbon, really not even smelling it that much. Um, Are you getting that sweetness that I got? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, Tangy it, sweetness. I just. It is sweet, but usually the sweet for a porter um, comes in the form of like a rich, full a body cream. taste. Yeah. And this one is watery almost. Yeah. I um, agree. I agree. And that's the most disappointing thing about it. Um, so with that, I give it a two. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Mike. I think this is terrible. Um, so it's got a, that tanginess that you were talking about. I have tasted like a sour note on most bourbon barrel aged beers. It's almost, and, and the sweetness you talked about, it's almost like a buttermilk kind of. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's a good that's, description. That, that's yeah. exactly what it is. It's, it, and, and. Honestly, it's usually something kind of hidden in the background. That to me is the prominent flavor in this. Yeah, I usually like that in the background because it's it, it's on the it's on the tail end of the bell curve and well, it's got and a it good adds flavor. Adds a bit of complexity. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's it's very watery. It's very heady. The head isn't great. It is like drinking watered down buttermilk. And um, it it you can tell it's an alcohol. It's a beer, but only barely. It's almost like drinking a flat beer. Yeah, and and for such a heady beer, that that's odd. Um, I love porters. I love bourbon barrel beers, and this one is just missing it. I honestly have to detract from it for being both a porter and ba- bourbon barrel age for how bad it is. It doesn't do either one well. Yeah. No, it, I'm giving it a one. One. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's it, uh, this is a, a low one. This is one of the lowest beers we've had. Yeah, and, uh, and I was with time, you. Yeah. I was really excited I, about me this. Me too. I was. I was. They, they, I saw that. They did and the like, bottle great. The moment that I saw that beer, because John and I were at the store. And it's expensive. We got two because we thought it'd be so good. Yeah. Yeah. But um, John and I were at the store and had kind of been perusing what they have. We actually went to a different store than we normally go to to try to spice up the selection. Um, and it was like, as soon as my eye caught that beer and I saw that it was a bourbon porter, I like stopped looking, period. I wasn't going to look at anything else. I grabbed it. John said, grab two. So we got two of them. And and that was the end of it. And because it should have been fantastic. Yeah. This could have been a four or five beer. Yeah. Could have easily was, been a four or five beer. I'm telling you, I looked at this going, this is going to this is going to be my first five. Oh, yeah. I was ready for it. I was ready, oh, yeah. excited about it. And. I'm so disappointed. Uh, so. so disappointed. Do we even want to play our game on this one? <laughs> yeah, I think we need to. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, I don't think this beer is going to get you laid, especially not by anybody who knows beer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't wish this beer on my exes. <laughs> um, so it's not that bad. Uh, yes, it is. So yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I, um, I, it's worse than that. I would. I, I would wish it on my exes. So here's That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. I'm not even going to put this as a breakup beer unless there is one case where this is a great breakup beer. If you don't have the balls to break up yourself, and you want them to break up with you. Bring in this beer. That's a good way to do it. That's a good yeah. way to do it. Uh, as far as a lawnmower beer goes, this is a good beer if you're going to drive your lawnmower off the cliff immediately afterwards. Other than that, no. <laughs> drink the gasoline uh, instead. Drink the gasoline instead. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious as to, as to if, what Beer Advocate said about this one. Anybody look that up? I, I haven't, but I, I can real quick. I, uh, uh, it's called. Uh, the this is going to test gentleman. my theory that that, that people uh, uh, pad the prop, numbers, prop, pad the numbers yeah. a lot. Because if this is a high number, like I suspect it's going to be in the threes, I'm going to be disappointed. Uh, I guess what, gentlemen? Hold up. Last gentleman. And what's it by? Strange, Strange Land. Land. Strange Land Brewing Company in Austin, Texas. Strange Land. Okay, let's see. I tell you, their graphic beer designer advocate. is awesome, though. Oh, yeah. fuck Beer Advocate. Fuck you. Exactly. Yeah. Fuck Beer Advocate. It's only advocate. got 40 ratings. Fine. What do you think? Three. 3.8. 3.75. God, that's fucking ridiculous. Okay. So, I don't know why we trust Beer Advocate. I really we, we don't. We don't. That's why we started this show. That's not why we started the no, show. We started, well, we wanted to drink beer and talk. but uh, Exactly. It's at least part of why we started this show. Beer Advocate sucks. Um, then why do we keep looking at him? Well, That's interesting. And going, interesting. And going, Anna, you're crazy. You gave this a two rating, and Beer Advocate says it's a three point eight. It's easy yeah, well, to everything talk shit to you is that a three point eight on Beer Advocate. Every, every, everything, yeah, <laughs> everything is a mid three, yeah. Uh, uh, all right, so 
back to our discussion of the CIA. Where are we going with this, John? So uh, we, we've kind of seen the history of the CIA. We, we've seen what's happened uh, uh, since this investigation came out. Uh, everything is, is a lot more controlled and looked after now. At least uh, it should be. They would have you think so. So I want to ask, we, we've recently had a bunch of CIA whistleblowers. Uh, we had Snowden come out yep. uh, with mass data collection again. Um, we've, we've even had specifically uh, Snowden talk about uh, dissenters and, and the problem that they would face. Um, what's changed? Are we looking at a different CIA? Is this the exact same CIA that, that came out of this investigation? And, and what is different? While yep. you say that, I have some tech issues to go work out, okay. but keep it going. I think um, uh, I think it's in the nature of uh, of an intelligence agency to overreach. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's you know if your if your job is to collect data for the state and you've got the got the the power of the state behind you, I think you can't help but overreach with this. Yeah, uh, it's got to be it's got to be checked constantly. It um, has to be checked constantly, but I think unfortunately the people who should be or are supposed to be checking it constantly are the ones benefiting from the overreach. Yeah. And um, and it becomes impossible to actually well, implement. I, I think there's a pendulum swing in here okay. uh, th th as we do this and I think in times of 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 great Disaster, World War II, we found the OSS. The Cold War, we found the CIA. Where there's a such a danger, we're willing to overlook things. Oh yeah, uh, which the Patriot Act after 9/11. Yeah. Uh, but I think in times of relative calm, that pendulum starts to swing back, mm -hmm. and and we start saying we got to get control of this. Yeah. And I I think right now we're back in this this time period where they're trying to get back in control of this. Right. Uh, I think it's probably it, I think. During the Obama administration, they started trying to do this, largely because I think it, I think uh, the, the Democratic Party could make a lot of hay uh, uh, politically out of the overreaches of the Republican administration. Right. Um, currently, with our, our current administration, with, with Trump in power uh, and, and, and all the the, uh, the sword shaking that's going on, I I think we're 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 in a period of, of overreach again. Uh, yeah. I think you have a. You have a Congress and a president right now that is not at all interested in checking the power of the intelligence agencies. Well, no, I mean they've they've gone to great lengths to uh, try to put people in place who favor a stronger and, central government. And, Kavanaugh being and, a great example, saying, including, yeah. including the court. Uh, well, well, Kavanaugh and, and, and well, even the, the you know the last two or three appointments to the Supreme Court have all been. Uh, very much a big government uh, appointee to th these things. Yeah. Uh, they, they they say that that that's privacy and security is is the the most important uh, uh, issue today uh, for 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 a lot of voters, but it doesn't seem to be true. Well, and you know that that's that's kind of another question I want to ask. Uh, if we agree that that the CIA is probably as out of control in ways that they're not going to get found out as they were then, or even not as out of control, but still out of control. And we said then that uh, political dissenters were going to have trouble, and we're saying it even more so now. Is there a path? Is, is there another church committee that can rise? Is there a path yeah. to fix it, or is it just the reality we have to face until like something extreme happens? I think the problem you run into with this is is the problem you run into with a lot of things in government, is that while we have elections every two years and presidents every four years, those elected leaders are not the ones running the agencies. Mm -hmm. The agencies are ran, are, are ran by a bureaucracy that stretches across many, many different uh, 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 administrations. Yeah. And so much of the actual work that government does is not done by elected leaders. Right. Mm -hmm. It's done by these these people that have been there through generation after generation yeah. after generation. Bureaucrats and who this have is worked how their we, way up. This is how we do it. Yeah. This is how we've always done it. And frankly, uh, the, you elected leaders that are here for two years, you don't really know what's going on. Yeah. And I think there's, a, there's, there's an argument for that. They don't know what's going on. They can't know what's going on in two years. You can't possibly know yeah. everything. Uh, and, and trusting your bureaucracy is something that you have to be able to do. But the evidence but shows... But also dangerous. It's dangerous. And the evidence shows that we can't trust it all the time. No. Let me ask you this. Because this is, this is a philosophical thing I had to struggle with when researching this. So this New York Times report comes out. 
whether it's a Snowden leak or whether it's 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 the one that happened in seventy four, and they detail all the things the CIA is doing. CIA is by any stretch of the imagination a covert organization who is there to do dirty work. Right? Okay. Was the screw up them violating the Constitution or was the script them getting caught doing it? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I the the fact that you say that they're they're by nature uh what was the word you used there? I, they're to do the dirty work. The dirty work. Uh, I think I think the CIA has got an important job. I think they're necessary. I think we need we need something to gather intelligence. Uh, and World War II proved that. Uh, we had to have a central intelligence agency of some sort to put this stuff together. I think a, a, a modern nation can't exist without a central intelligence agency of some type. My problem is... I think when the agency stopped being about collecting data and started being about taking action, that's where the problem is. So would it be a problem if the CIA was doing this stuff and then kind of passing stuff off to, I don't know, military, FBI, whatever, and they were doing the same thing? I don't have a – well, here's the difference. You've got, you've, got a, you've got a check on there because you've got more than one thing doing this. You don't have one doing collecting the information and then the same one acting on it. I think there's something valuable about one agency collecting all this information and then presenting it to the military and saying, hey, this is what's going on out there. Let your men in the field decide how to use that. Or uh, I, that, that makes sense to me. Yeah, there's well, a and they're, they're the other, the, I'm sorry, just a second. The, sorry. Other, the other part of this is I think Truman was right when he founded the CIA and said that the purpose is to collect data on foreign dangers. Mm-hmm think he was right there when the cia started overreaching and collecting data on americans that's a violation of its charter yeah. they should not be allowed to do that well um I, I think it's worth considering that um what is it that you're going to consider foreign um because i think that there is an argument that they could make that i would disagree with but an argument that could be made that um their efforts to stop political dissenters uh, could be considered um, foreign threats okay. because they are foreign to the culture that the leadership at the yeah, time but, believes but no. is American. And no, if you're if you're if you're collecting data on American citizens, then it's not a foreign threat. Uh, 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 political dissent is part of our system. Well, and one of now, the things now, that if, we're battling with right de- now is that we have. Theoretically, that we have American citizens who are engaging in uh, terrorist behavior driven by foreign oh, sure, leaders. Ab- sure we do. Sure we do. Or foreign and, and there is a way to deal with that, and that is through domestic agencies that have to go through a, a, a system of going to a court and getting a, a, a warrant for this. And that's you, cannot, you, you cannot have a system where – you cannot have a fair system. Obviously, mm-hmm. we do. But you can't have a just system where Americans are, are, can be spied on without any oversight by anyone else. Go get a goddamned warrant, and like it's okay. Like from the FISA courts. Go, go get a, a legal warrant. A FISA court is not legal because we have a right to a trial by jury. Mm-hmm. It's, that's an illegal court. Follow the damn word of the law. Follow it. Give people that, that right. I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem even with the FBI collecting data on, on people if they go through the right process. Right. Don't get batch search warrants. You're, not, not this, I'm going to put a search warrant on AT&T to get all their data. That's, mm-hmm. that's bullshit. You have a right to say, I'm investigating John, and I need a search warrant. For this warrant. reason. I need and a search to look warrant to look for this on, on it. That's, that's permissible. That's, an, that's a permissible investigation. Mm-hmm. And I don't have a problem with that. But you don't have a right. If, you've got, if you're investigating John, you don't have a right to come and, and, and look at my phone records because I called you one time. Yeah. You, you're not investigating me. So fair enough, and I agree with all of that. I'm just saying I think that that is an argument that can be made um, when you are looking at American culture versus citizenship. Oh, it's exactly the argument that was made with the Patriot Act. It's, mm-hmm. it, that, that is the argument that was yeah. made, and it's a wrong argument. I agree. Yeah, I want to go back real quick because one of the the buzzwords mm-hmm. for for the modern argument has been metadata, right? right. The mass collection of metadata, and and then you know one side says, well, they're not collecting your, your what you're actually saying; they're just collecting, you know, this metadata, and, and that's okay. But the other isn't. 
So one of the programs I found, I told you there was like 250,000 photos of letters taken. Another program that was actually much broader but collected metadata and is, is a little bit on shakier grounds constitutionally. They were going through and looking at letters that were being sent, not opening them, but just keeping record of who was sending letters to who and yeah. how many letters yeah. and how often. Collecting metadata yeah. Let, on let's talk letters. about that for a minute because I remember the first time the first time years ago we got into metadata. I had mm-hmm. to get you to explain to me what that was. So I think we may have some new listeners that don't understand. Can you explain what metadata is? Yeah, so so metadata is just data about data. your data. Information so, about information. Yeah. I'm gonna give you an example of where you might have encountered metadata if you were snooping on somebody. If you got into their computer and you saw a bunch of videos And you just went through and read the names of all the videos and all the programs. You didn't open any of them. You just want to see what the file name was and maybe even what size the file was. So if there was a video that was like maybe um, me holding my breath underwater, and you look at the file size and you're like, oh, that's a two-minute video, you may now know I don't hold my breath more than two minutes. But if you look and it's an hour-long video, you know, maybe maybe that'll tell you something (laughs) else. Or how about... I'm not looking at your picture that you have on your phone, but I am looking at the data of the location where the picture was taken. Right. Yeah. Where now, you're taking na- your now, pictures. Now I know where you're, get, where you're going. Yeah. yeah. So it's that kind of stuff. It's the stuff you would when see. When you're snooping through your boyfriend's phone and you look at the list of messages that are there and who he's sending messages to, but you don't actually read the messages. Yes. That kind of stuff. That is metadata. And you're a bitch. Okay. I mean, Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> But uh, uh, but yeah, so so I mean, th- does that? I, I mean, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just wanted to kind of get yeah. that for our audience. So and they if you're understand. doing that, leave him. Like, there's no yeah. reason to stay yeah. with him. Yeah. Just yeah. fucking leave. It's fine. Uh, and then pay five hundred dollars, and you can sleep with me. Smile, Mike. You're prettier when you smile. Never mind. No, never mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. oh Lord, help me. Uh. You know, nobody's giving me that five hundred bucks yet, and it's hurting my feelings. It oh. really is. I, I, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling unloved. If it's we hold on, hold on, guys. If we crowdfunded five hundred dollars to sleep with Mike, would you like have an orgy with everybody who contributed? Oh my God! I'm, I'm, have, I'm, are you realizing I, what you got I, yourself I into I'm, now? I think we're going to have to change our are we? Uh, our system because See, I'm going to tell you something. Me and Anna discussed. Oh God, John, we were plotting against you, Mike. <laughs> always, always. That is true. Well, we we discussed shortly crowdfunding a donation for Star Child. I'm, I'm withdrawing my uh, <laughs> my position immediately. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Are you okay? S- send me to an incel. You can still community. nap with me. Send me I'm to an a incel community. Champion napper. Uh, I, I'll I'll sleep with you, but you Lousy gotta send a headshot though. first. You gotta do what? Send a headshot first. Oh, send a headshot first. <laughs> and it's just an entire like graduating class of 1954. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so right in his age range. <laughs> <coughs> so anyway, is there anything else on the CIA that we need to cover? I think we've I think we've we've hit all the high points. Uh, this was interesting to me. Yeah. It was uh, fun. Did uh, I'm curious now that we've talked about this? Do do did anybody's opinion change about anything? With this? Mine, mine did. Mine did considerably. To because, what? Uh, th- there was a lot of stuff in here where you know the reports are coming out, and I, I believed all the mass data collection stuff. I, I believed all of it. Um, but then th- there was some other fr- more fringe ideas that were coming out. And I was like, ah, I don't I don't know if I'm buying those. And after reading this, it, it honestly pushed me a little bit more toward the conspiracy to sympathize more with the conspiracy. Theories. Let me ask you this. If, if we had Blaine here as a producer today, would, w- w- where would Blaine come down on this? Um, publicly or after he's had a few. Drinks? <laughs> Let's just let that one go. I just okay. thought I'd ask that one. So anyway, um, did, did you change any? Not a lot, no. I learned some things. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think I moved. Not yeah, really. I, uh, I, I, I'm still kind of there where I, I think the government's doing a lot of shady stuff, but I don't think they're doing as much as people think they are. I, I'm, yeah, like they don't give a shit about you. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. not watching you. They yeah. are doing that shady stuff to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not you. Yeah, you, yeah. Don't, you, you, you probably. You, you think probably you're on matter. a list, but you're probably not. I'm on a list. Well, that's because you served in the military, I'm actually. I'm on a list. I, I feel like I'm on a list. Everybody feels like they're on a list. You're on my list. <laughs> I'm just saying, every time I go through the fucking airport, I get picked, picked for extra. It's because you look like an Arab. I look like an Arab? What? I'm joking. 
Okay. That was a... A-Rab. I get, wow. I get picked, but that's just because I always tell him to pat me down. So That's just because it's the best, most action you ever yeah. get. That's the only massage he likes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, so if that's all that we have on the CIA, then uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. If yeah, you did, you can uh, become a supporter of ours at patreon.com slash sixpackphilosophy. Uh, you can also hit up our swag store on Teespring by going to teespring.com slash stores slash six pack philosophy all spelled out yeah for some reason if you just search for it it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't we got new stuff on there so check it out it should be a lot of fun um other than that you can hit us up on social media by searching six pack philosophy and uh oh we have some new quizzes up on the website oh we do we do and some other cool shit you don't forget to see subscribe how conservative to our newsletter. you are or how liberal you are uh and some other stuff and some other shit yeah um but lots of new stuff going on join our our What's it called? Newsletter. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've had fun and we hope you have too. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 